Hi, and welcome back to It's Been Chaotic Podcast. I am Par with my co-host. Aldo. <laughs> and we, if you can hear right now, we have another special co-host that's sitting on my desk, and that leads into the topic that we are talking about today. If you would like to say hi, Whiskey, we would appreciate it. There we go. I he's think purring. he wants to. No, he's purring. He's, he's, getting, he's getting little paps right now. He's very content with his life. He also wants kisses. Oh, yes. I don't know if the mic can pick it up. I can't hear it. Oh, well, he's his, he's not he's kind of ducking his head down. You want to say hi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you can kind of hear him. He's purring, but he's also debating on if he wants to sit on my shoulder or if he wants to stick his head into my hoodie. Okay, we're gonna give me kisses. Thank you. Also, listeners, if you can hear, I have a new mic. Yes, Aldo finally got their new mic in today. We've been messing with the settings, so hopefully... Uh, thank you for purring directly into the mic. We appreciate this. <laughs> thank if... you, you can hear me, but you cannot hear my stomach rumbling. <laughs> uh, leading into today with our special co-host here today, we are going to be talking about pets or... Uh, animals in general, um, because somebody has been very hung up on a very specific topic for the last few months. <laughs> yes, but let's leave it to later. Yeah. Let's now talk about the pets we have and the pets that we had. Yeah, a little bit about the past. Why don't we? Why don't we start with the past, since we all know that I currently have my my darling little. Um, <laughs> cat right here this is for anybody who is listening and uh obviously probably doesn't know because i have never mentioned this uh whiskey is my first cat i've ever had in ever my dad was allergic growing up so we never had cats uh my cousin had a cat um but his cat is um not very nice because it was more of an outdoor cat and it would make you bleed if it didn't like it's you it's not it's not nice no, uh, Tilford is definitely... Can you leave the applesauce <laughs> packet I was eating alone? Um, Tilford is a little bit of a menace. He kind of wants to see uh, humankind uh, fall. <laughs> He's made many of my relatives bleed profusely uh, by clawing them. Hi, Bubba's. Um, so yeah. I've grown also, up with... He, like completely run away and i've oh, yeah. been told by multiple family members not to try pick him up no he will he will latch on to like you know how cats give playful nips like he will yeah. he will latch on and he won't let go until like you pry him off i've been told yeah so he's not exactly the nicest cat but i grew up with dogs instead and i i had my own dog growing up um and we had a family dog that was my we would we would split because we only had two dogs growing up like my parents had a dog before i was born but we had two dogs while i was growing up and for four years we had the one dog which uh her name was sage and she was a box terror schnauzer and she was a cranky old lady when she was um old and she, but she was good but she preferred my sister and my father mostly my father and then, um, when I was young, we, don't eat that, let that go, that is not yours, drop the bracelet, drop it, sorry, he's on the desk, so he's gonna pick up things that are on said desk, um, for the listeners, Parker has a very strong tendency to immediately address the cat and talk to him, also, you definitely will hear it throughout this podcast, and whiskey is with us. Yeah, he's he's currently sitting in front of me, so it's like he's here. Can't do much about it's that. It's hard to ignore him. It's, it's hard when he wants to steal all of your jewelry because he likes shiny things. Um, I'm like blocking him right now with my hand, and he's not appreciating it. Um, and then I g got my own dog, which we would prefer in our family to say that it was my mother. And my mother's and my dog, because my dog, Neo, we named him. We named him after the Matrix, which is kind of funny later in life because there was a reason why it became funny, but also sad at the same time, is 
uh, he was a poodle Yorkie schnauzer, and he was such a sweet boy. I loved him dearly. Um, by the way, Whiskey has abandoned us, for anybody who wanted to know. Um, if anybody has watched The Matrix, everybody know that uh, Neo, Keanu's, uh, Keanu Reeves' character, uh, goes blind. Well, in the last two years of Neo's life, he has, both of these dogs have sadly passed, by the way. Neo became a diabetic, and a month later, he actually went blind. <laughs> so, which is sad. Uh, he was uh, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Uh, not type 2, type 1 diabetes. So he was given a shot twice a day, every day, by moi. Um... And then he went blind, and then during the last year of his life, he started losing his hearing. And then, um, he was getting really, he was getting kind of sick again. He was, he was four, he was going to be 14 just before he passed. Um, so a few months before he had passed, we were noticing that he was getting a little sad again, a little down again. So I took him back to the vet. And it turns out that he had a tumor in his... And yes, it's going to be a little weird, but he had a tumor but. in his butt. Yes. <clears throat> and they didn't think it was cancerous, but they wanted to be sure about that. So they um, gave me meds to give to him to clean up the area so they could possibly check it out and get it removed just in case and like check to see if it was cancerous. Well, Neo never got to finish his meds because the tumor ruptured, causing him to seize um and he ended up passing away the same day um we had made the uh, decision mostly my decision because he was my dog and i was the one that was having a meltdown um that day um because i was home alone with him when i found him and um we made the executive decision to put him down because they tried like giving him meds to try to get him to fall asleep but because he was he was just constantly seizing the meds were doing nothing so he was just in a constant state of like seizing in his head and he had brain damage and he couldn't walk straight anymore he couldn't he could barely hold himself up and if he got caught in a corner he would start crying um so we made the decision that it was best to let him go because he didn't need to suffer like this, and I didn't want to see him suffer like that. Um, it has been a year since he has passed now, so it's a little bit easier to talk about. But that is um, what has happened, and um, yeah, we're we're it's been all... exactly a year since he passed, as we said, as you said, yeah. that um, he passed before his birthday. Yes. He's, he was um, a Valentine's baby. He was a Valentine's Day baby. He, yeah. Uh, for anybody wondering, no, he was not exactly born on Valentine's Day, uh, but we got him on Valentine's Day. And so that became his birthday because that was when we got him. Because we didn't know exactly oh. what, we didn't know what day he was actually born. So we chose the day because that was the day that my parents were like, you got him. Yeah, we're like, we're getting you the dog. So that became his birthday. Yeah. Um, you said that you. Hmm? <laughs> you said that you didn't grow up with cats. No, I, I grew up with both cats and dogs. I don't know if I can talk about my side now. Whatever you have, drop it. <laughs> <laughs> talk about your talk I about your animals. I gotta get this from him. Come here. Okay. Give that to me. Um, no. So, I um, had both, you can hear Parker in the background, I'm really sorry. Uh, I had both uh, cats and dogs. Uh, when I was a little kid, my sister always wanted cats, so she was like getting strays here and there, but they always like run away. Um, but we had a dog, a family dog. Um, her name was Cora, and... Um, like my uncle on the other side of the fence because we lived fence to fence uh, had Cora's sister so there was like both of them um, they didn't have like a 
specific breed. They were like short, um, almost black hair, black haired dogs. Um, that basically, um, like stomped here and there. Um, when I was, um, in primary school, I think Cora passed, and not longer after. Uh, her sister passed or it was like the other way around I don't really remember anymore but because I was so sad like next year my parents decide to get me a dog and this time she was my dog her name was Żuka which as we've sp spoken like in the last episode I'm Polish so it's a Polish word and it means like a very small vein like vein but like veiny kind of um and I named her. Um, I didn't get to like, because I was a child, I didn't get to like teach her um, many stuff, like train her. Uh, and my brother, because he was still living at home, he would um, like teach her bad stuff. So like jumping high and uh, like stealing food or whatever. Um, and she was always a uh, um, like a backyard uh, dog. She wasn't really allowed to go in the inside the house. Uh, she later in her life um, started to suffering with cancer, uh, like dog dog's breast cancer. I don't really know what's the name for it in English. Um, and she survived the first time and then she got pregnant with like a neighbor's dog or something when she ran ran away um and she had seven puppies which one didn't survive so it was six um and five of them got given away and i kept the most like i kept one the, that was like the most lazy and antisocial um one of the group of course he did. Uh, like he literally like he was running uh, around but he didn't want to like socialize with other pups and uh, most of the time he was just like um, like spread out <laughs> in the uh, on, like the mattress or something in uh, in the coop um so i was like yeah let i'm going to keep this one and his name is because he is still alive uh bertolini but we call him Bartek, which is a Polish, um, like, human name. Um, which is funny, because I also have an IRL friend that is named like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, Żuka passed, um, I think, three years ago now, or four. Uh, again, because she had a com comeback of the cancer. So, yeah. cancer came back and took my dog away. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I remember when I came back from uni, like uni, um, that day to my parents, and they didn't tell me that she passed. They told me when I got home, and I remember, um, like in the doorway to the backyard, me and Bartek were just. Like I started sobbing and he started sobbing, like wailing, like dogs do. Mm. And we were just sitting on the floor uh, for like two hours, uh, having a breakdown. Like I, this was the first time that I saw a dog having a breakdown because he was a mama's boy. Yeah. Like he's still a mama's boy. So, mm. yeah. I would say Neo had a breakdown over a few things because like when Sage passed... Neo was still alive. Sage was older than Neo. Sage passed from old age, so she got to live a long life. She died at the age of 16. Um, she's just old. Um, Neo had went blind before we had had to put Sage down, so Neo didn't really understand that Sage wasn't there. Like, there was a part of him that could tell, but he couldn't see that she wasn't there. Um... But, yeah, Neo had also died from cancer. The, we found out that the tumor that had ruptured was cancerous. 
So, um, also, I talked about the dog part of the history. Now, the cats. Ooh, so, cats. as I said, my sister always wanted to have cats. Um, but they were like strays and running away. So, finally, she brought a cat home in a box. Um, I don't remember if it was like a, from a friend or somewhere. Uh, but this one actually stayed. And we called him, she called him, he was Harry Cat. She called him Severus from Severus Snape from Harry <laughs> Potter. Um, he was a black cat, but he had one white um, paw in, on the back. I don't remember if it was right, right or, or left. Um, but it was like, just, just like one sock, one white sock on the black cat. And he had like a little, um, small, small, white bow tie kind of thing, or like a tie on the front, and that was it. The rest of it, it was a black, and maybe that's why she called him Severus. I don't really, I can't really tell. I was a kid, um, but he lived with us for a very long time, and then on one Christmas Eve. He went out, and in Poland we have this tradition um, when at the midnight at Christmas Eve, like dogs, fed, like, generally, like cats, dogs, like, all, all the pets that you have are supposed to speak with human voice for that one minute at, the, at midnight. Um, so usually kids go to talk with their pets. Obviously it's like a tale, so it doesn't really happen. But it's still like a little small tradition to, ha to have a conversation with your pets. Um, and we went and he wasn't there. Like he wasn't in, um, in the house. He wasn't outside. We couldn't find him. And we started looking for him the next day when he didn't come back. And the next day when he didn't come back. And up, like we never found him. We didn't know if it was a neighbor that took him, if he died on the streets, we have no idea, but he disappeared on Christmas Eve. So, then my sister got another cat, and another male, he was um, named Felek, and Felek was also my sister's cat, and he hated me. He hated me. <laughs> he he couldn't funny. stand me. Like um, we had beef. With beef. I had beef. I had beef with this you had cat. Beef with a cat. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was in, um, like I say, high school, but it was like between sixteen and nineteen years old, um, for me, I um, mm, Found my parents like left or something, and I found him outside, and he um, had like half of his face falling out, kind of. And my parents came back, took him to the vet, saved him, and he lived for another few years. Uh, but we, me and my friends in high school, started calling him a zombie cat because um, his face on one side was like dented in. Um, Mm. And then he passed uh, peacefully in like the back of um, no my dad's drive-in. Uh, he just laid there and went to sleep, and he was like completely peacefully. And then we didn't have a cat for so many years up until now, when like my mom about a year and a half ago um, went to. Her friend, who is a priest, who has a cat um, that like breeds four times a year, so the priest has lots of cats. And my mom, like we we used to go there like every like uh, fourth Sunday or something, um, just to visit or help out or whatever or or like get fruits because the. Uh, this priest is also a gardener and I wanted one cat and my mom was like no you're not getting a cat and then they my parents came back no. by themselves and they my mom got herself a cat because she saw um, a little lady cat 
that <laughs> was like a little lady so cat. smart so smart in, in my mother's eyes <laughs> so smart. and my mom snatched <laughs> my mom snatched her and was like she's mine i'm taking her i don't care and my mom came back home and she's like i got a cat and um my mom told me that it's her cat but um it's my and my sister's job to name her um this was the first cat that we had that was a female and um i was like debating on many names and i decided to name her Tofu and I was so dead set on it that I not? tried hey, to you know. con like make my sister be like yes it, it should be Tofu and my, my sister was like sure I kind of like the names that come from food for cats so I was like yes I won <laughs> and I told my mom it's Tofu and my parents didn't really like it um, but it stayed they called her um, uh, like a toffee sometimes <laughs> instead of tofu, but it's tofu. <laughs> so, uh, for anybody, uh, when I said no the first time, by the way, I was not saying no to Aldo. I was saying no to my cat because he's trying to knock shit off of um, the table. Um, and then he proceeded to then turn around after walking away and coming back and then trying to knock something off the shelf. So um, I'm not telling them no. I'm telling the current uh, gremlin child of mine no. Because um, he has, I wouldn't say he has full-blown zoomies right now, but he's definitely awake because I woke him up. So, because I woke up. Um, yeah. Um, I guess on now the other thing is like you you just talked about animals that you currently have which are your your dog and your uh, Cat that is it's still awesome. alive too. Yeah. yeah, I just said which you what are you doing? Can you not? Can you I get think out of there? it would be good, a good idea for us to talk about how you got whiskey Yeah, I want to I want to talk about that, but I'm trying except somebody's being um, you know, Walking Disaster. I love you. <laughs> By the way. You tiny, tiny gremlin. Um, so, Whiskey. So, with Neo and... I don't know how we got Sage. I was a little too little when we got Sage to know exactly how they got Sage. With Neo, we had got it from a friend of ours that had breeded a litter of puppies. And there was only two boys. And Neo was the only boy that was being sold and my parents tried so hard to talk me into getting a girl and i went no i want the boy dog give me the boy dog when we when we got neo he actually had i didn't tell you this but he had a white diamond on his head and when he got his haircut they actually sh they like shaved it and it actually got shaved off because it just didn't grow back white it grew back black because he was a he was a curly black dog for anybody wondering um, and then he became a gradient. <laughs> his head was black, and then he would fade into a light gray color at his butt. Is that's how he looked? Um, Whiskey though is a rescue cat. I had uh, we res I have rescued Whiskey. I have learned from talking to the people that I got Whiskey through, and I will not say the organization, but thank you to them. Uh, because if I say where they are, it's kind of a generalization of where I am even though we've talked about where uh like general areas that I'm near but I just don't want to give that out but thank you to that organization for uh giving me this delightful delightful ball of energy I find it very funny how you stumbled upon the we I we um when you said about rescuing him because I was there yeah. when we saw him and um, well, I was. You, you were like so yeah. transfixed with this cat. I was you just so stood there. You stood there, and you were like, "I want this one." And so, I was like, "Get it, yeah. get it." <laughs> so, for anybody wondering, uh, me and Aldo, we're not gonna deep dive into it, but we both have uh, some mental disorders. I suffer from 
severe anxiety and OCD, which anybody who knows what OCD is, it's an anxiety disorder. So my anxiety goes through the roof. Uh, on top of that, I have ADHD. Um, so I have a doctor's note um, stating that I can have a support animal because my dog was a support animal. And my apartment sadly did not house animals, um, but by the uh, like uh, service animal law or whatever, uh, they cannot turn me away if I already live here. And I have a note stating that I can get this animal because it is for my own benefits. So we had worked that all out. And I was, like Aldo said, I was very transfixed with this cat. Like, so let's lead up to that story, though. Aldo was visiting from Poland, right? Um, yeah. And we actually had two other friends that were with us at the time. So this is our friends Ben and Clay. And they had came from their states that um, they were visiting from. And they were here, Ben was here for about a week and a half, and Clay was here for a week, right? Yeah. And when we had picked up Clay, we were actually, uh, it was one of my family members' birthday, and we had actually drive to the airport where my family member had lived in the city. And we had picked them up, and then we went to my family member's house because we were actually going to be floating a river for said birthday. Which turned, we'll get deep dive into that. That was a disaster, by the way. That was, I, I have. We will deep dive into the um, trip later. The story. Yeah. In like a separate episode when we will be talking about like actual disasters. <laughs> yeah. Cause like we laugh about it now, but at the time a bunch of us were kind of crazy. That was scary. It was bad. That it was, was scary. It was bad. And me and Ben were pissed off at a few of the people we didn't even know because it's like it's a public area there were a bunch of people floating the river like okay up. okay okay you are but anyways take a breather and we will talk about this situation later so we stopped floating yeah, the river we stopped we were done floating the river so we had stayed for two we, nights we lived yeah we, we obviously we lived we all lived <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my god anyways we had finished this or that ordeal up and we were staying for two nights right and so on the last day that we were supposed to be there it's a two hour drive back to two and a half to three hour drive back to where i live and we had been really really wanted to go to uh what we went to a pet smart i believe ben really so, yeah. really wanted to go look at cats and so we found a cat we found a pet smart i'm not gonna say where but we found a pet smart um and we had stopped and we decided to look at the cats and Ben wanted to be in the room where you're like, you're not where the windows are, where you can look in. Ben wanted to be in the room so he could like have them open the cages and he could like pet the cats. And we, Ben started crying. I started crying too. <laughs> they both started crying. Ben was remember sobbing. That, but you were, you remember were crying. Remember that ben lady. Remember that lady that came back and left the cat. Oh, yeah, because her daughter, we, they had found out they had never had a cat before, and they found out that their daughter was allergic. And so Ben started to sob, like, like blubbering. I do. Like, I started crying when this cat was left and started crying for that woman. I felt, I like, felt... it is so sad. I felt bad, but it was, it wasn't like a big cat. Like, it wasn't like, most of the cats that were in the cage, other than Whiskey, and I think one or the cat, were all kittens, or younger cats. So, I had no doubt in my mind that they would get adopted. Most people want kittens over fully grown cats. But Whiskey was there, and Whiskey at the time did not have the name that he has now. And we'll get into why, like, his, his new, I'm not gonna say his old name. Um... But I for a second didn't remember. <laughs> it's such a British name. It's so stupid. Yeah. I don't mind it, but it's so British. But uh, we'll get into why we had changed it to whiskey. And no, it's not because I'm an alcoholic. I'll explain that later. Um, but whiskey is a orange tabby. He is. Uh, he was a one year and something old orange tabby. Um, and... 
he was pretty much fully grown. He was a fully grown cat. Uh, he actually was feral before they had found him. So he had nobody before me. Um, he had ended up living um, on the streets, a feral cat, because he was in a city. Where I live is more of a like foresty, rural farming area. So, but where he was was a city. And they had say they so had. So I want to give context because you said he was feral. He was. Uh, in the cage when we saw him, he was very very calm, mm -hmm. and he looked a little bit older than one year old because yeah. he's a big cat. Yeah. So. He was calm. He didn't like people. He 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 had been kind of around people. I had gotten a video of when he was a little smaller from the people that I got him through. Um, they had had him for a few months, so he was a he was used to being around people, but he wasn't used to being in a home. Nobody had wanted him, um, and because he had been feral with the organization, you had to be twenty one or older to get a cat because they were feral. Um. So I had worked with them to get whiskey and he was he was a very quiet cat. He didn't really like a lot of things. He 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 still is a very quiet cat for how large he is. He doesn't meow. The only time he meows is when I'm coming home from work and he I open the door and I wake him up and he starts screaming at me because he wants to be picked up. That's it. He doesn't meow. He squeaks. He makes squeaky noises. That's that's literally it. He doesn't do anything else. Any purse. Sometimes, sometimes he'll be like cranky with me, and he'll start trailing, and I'm like, "Don't you trail at me, sir." But when we got him, and we drove back to your apartment. Yep. Um. I I was still staying with you for yes. like a, half a month, I think. Yes. Um, and because you were working, I and I was like on a vacation. I um. I was staying with him most of the time, and we learned that, well, he wasn't, he, w he didn't hate me, but he definitely didn't like me, he preferred Par than me, um, yeah. he was like, also, at the very beginning, he was very skittish, we knew that he um, will be a cuddly cat, uh, because he liked touch. He did. Um, but also wasn't used to it. So he, when he got out of the bathroom, because for the first half a week he was in the bathroom. Yeah, then we started leaving uh, the door open so he could come yeah, out on his own. And he started hiding, like under the bed, under the couch. And I remember one night he jumped on the bed. <laughs> and oh, you yeah. were awake. I, was I awake. wasn't. I, yeah, you were this... awake and I wasn't because I am a little bit more of a deep sleeper. Uh, this person can fall asleep and... no seconds flat, and I hate it because I have such bad insomnia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can sleep, like, I can go to sleep very fast. But, um, I, rem I, I can be woken up when someone somebody touches me. Uh, I don't really get w woken up by, like, noise um, much. And because he was on the bed... He got on my on my side on my yeah. leg, and I woken up. And he... Far wanted to give me a sign to not move, but I did obviously move because I was been waking up woken up by somebody touching my feet. Well, not your feet. And he was I needing just... he was needing your butt. That's what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, he was a little bit higher than my yeah. feet. But when I woken up, I did I didn't realize you it. jolted so fast that it scared yeah. him so quickly. I jolted, and I just saw with my eyes i yeah. was him like bolting throughout the bed on the yeah. other side <laughs> yeah and you had i don't know if you still have it but you had like boxes behind your bed at the time and he like like jumped through the boxes yeah <laughs> he, yeah because this is like this wasn't a super long time after i had moved into my apartment it had been maybe a month month and a half after yeah um, you still had like uh, boxes with books uh, behind yeah. your bed and boxes with like uh my like wall decorations and that my posters <laughs> um but yeah i i had i remember this very vividly as i was laying there and we had been laying there facing each other and i was trying to like be really quiet because if i had moved it would scare him if i had made a noise it would scare him so i was like trying to like 
you know it doesn't work when it's like dark in the room but i was like trying to like motion to them to not move and to like to be very gentle and nope <laughs> i remember them flipping and looking at him so quickly and he stopped and then booked it so but listen if you were me in my body you would do the same <laughs> if somebody touched you like that in, no, no, no. in your fair sleep enough. fair enough but it was funny because after a while he started getting used to people, but like Alda had said, I had been at work and I had been, it was pretty, it was a pretty stressful time during my life, like a very stressful time during my life. And he had already had a name before uh, what he's named now. And so it felt, and I'll explain this a little bit more, it felt a little weird, but um, Aldo was with them a lot more than I was. And I was under a lot of stress at the time because I had, I have, and I still have multiple jobs. Um, but you got anxiety over this. Yeah, and anxiety over some other things, and then I was having some OCD issues with uh, having a cat because they jump on things, and I never had a cat before because, like I said, but um. Yeah, that's the thing between like cats and dogs. Dogs don't really jump on your shelves. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to I was trying to find a way around that and like figure it out and we had uh, expected the lady had told me that whiskey seemed to be a one kind of cat kind of person and um you had been with him a lot so I thought that he would take a liking to you but truth be told didn't. he really he didn't. didn't he he doesn't like anybody as i've realized he will tolerate people in the room but he will look at me and be like father why why did you do this to me why did you bring this person that i know nothing about into my life <laughs> i'm like you're fine um because we yeah. i've had multiple people over and he's he's still like he'll sit two feet away from them and like you'll be able to see him like he's not afraid to be out and about when you're here but like he will not get anywhere close to you he'll get close yeah. to me won't get close was, to you <laughs> i was very used to having cats yeah um so whiskey's behavior wasn't like anything different to me um so i tried playing with him like i didn't mind when he scratched me and i like really didn't mind his like behavior um, and I was letting him, him, like, just walk on the table or whatever when he, like, Yeah, I don't, I don't care if he it. walks on the table, it's the shelves that I had the problem with. And, um, the thing is that despite the fact that, at, like, at the end of my visit, he didn't really mind anymore when um, petting him, mm -hmm. he still didn't really like me, no. like... He and he would scratch me more than you. Yeah, he would He would very rarely scratch me. I think uh, even to this day, I've had him for half a year now. Almost half a year. Yeah. If I'm thinking about it correctly. About five to six yes. months. I have maybe, I like, I still can see like some of the scars of like scratches on my hand, but they're like, they're, because they're, they're scratches, they fade pretty quickly. But I like, I, I've gotten like maybe. A handful so i could count all the scratches that he's given me on both my hands he has very rarely scratched me um I, I, I just looked at my hands because i remember that he gave me a little scar from his scratch and i still have it so yeah, yeah it was deep <laughs> yeah he, he he goes in when he does it i have more i have more scars from like me burning myself at my work than i have than from him scratching me yeah um but like we had stated, we had gotten him, and um, he was very attentive, and he didn't like people. And I really thought, because Aldo was here more than I was when I was at home, um, that he would take a liking to them more than he would take a liking to me. Nope. He's like, he pretty much went, you're mine, and then hated everybody else. <laughs> and he still does yeah. that. Uh, he still does that to this day. He still... Because for New Year's, I had my uh, my sibling and their spouse over in my apartment. And their spouse was trying so hard to get the cat to play with them. 
and he was not having it. And I remember saying, like, I got a photo and it was it was hilarious in my brain. I was like, he is not having this. He he's not going to play with you. Yeah. Um, you had a like, small period of time when you thought that you would give him back. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so in the, it was about a month after we had gotten whiskey and Aldo was about to leave to go back to Poland. And it was a week before they had to leave and I was, I was literally having mental breakdowns every single day over so much stress. It felt like I couldn't breathe. I was having panic attacks at work that I had to leave work because and i felt horrible because I, i'm never like this i always try to keep this stuff under wraps especially when i'm at my job but i i i, I couldn't hold it in like i was i was having so much stress over so many things and i felt bad about so many things at the time and having the cat at the time just wasn't helping me because i had never had a cat before and i had been talking to a lady and she was trying to like figure out a way to like have me keep him but at the end of the day she's like okay well if you can bring him back this day when we were going to drive aldo back to the airport um well i was driving aldo back to the airport they were like uh you can drop him off the morning of or no yeah about the morning of the night before he was this was before i blocked out blocked off the underside of my bed for anybody wondering the underside of my bed is now blocked because he kept keeps pulling out my internet cords and so i don't want him to get hurt so that's blocked off he can't get under there now um he had been hiding under there though and i had looked at him and he had just woken up from a nap and he was looking at me and i went I'm not going to give you up. I texted the lady and I said, I've changed my mind. I'm going to keep him for another month without Aldo being here, with him being by himself in the apartment, and I'm going to see how this works. It went well, because he's still here. But we had also changed his, and this is one thing that helped, we had ended up changing his name. So his name before was a very British name. I won't go into details about, but... Um, his name was so British, and I didn't mind it. You didn't, you didn't feel the connection. Though. No, but it didn't feel like I had like I don't want to say a claim over him because I don't want to say I like. But he was my he was my pet. But it was like I had named Neo, and all of my all the other animals that I know of have been pets that um most of my family have gotten from breeders. And so we've always named the pet since they were a puppy or, you know. And so it just didn't feel like I had a very deep connection with him, which I felt bad about. So we had sat on the kitchen floor and we had also debated this with some of our friends over the Discord. I was still there, by the way. Yeah, they were still here when this happened. Um, we were We were folding and I think packing your stuff up is what we were doing. And I looked at him and I was saying names and he because he didn't even respond to the name he had. He didn't respond to it. Um, and I had looked at him and he like I said, he's an orange tabby, so it's kind of cliche, but I looked at him and I went. I was like, I don't know if I like this name because I had been telling Aldo about it. And then one of our other friends said it in the discord and I went, let's try this. And so I looked at him and I went whiskey. And he whipped around and looked dead at me from the kitchen. He was sitting under the kitchen table and we were sitting in the main living area. Yeah, by the way, though, just to add context, Whiskey wasn't the first name we said. No. Like, we playing had... with ideas, saying words to him, and he didn't react at all up until you said Whiskey. Yeah, up until he was he was not reacting to any of the names that we were giving him. Because I wanted to, I was trying to, like, I, I had said, like, things like Apollo or Hermes or... A bunch of other shit and then i said whiskey and that was the only thing he reacted to i'm not an alcoholic i promise <laughs> and i'll explain. our friend is though <laughs> our, yeah our friend you're not going to say to him like We're which one really, but... not, yeah um i'll tell you a story that happened at one of my jobs though which is kind of funny 
Um, but yeah, he had ended up reacting to that and it ended up being his new name and his um, name is now Whiskey Gray. Um, and counterintuitive, but don't judge me. Um, and yeah. And that ended up being a little bit more of a click for us. And we it ended up clicking a little bit better in my brain. And he's now here. And he is very sweet. He's very cuddly. He still hates everybody else. But I wake up to him trying to suffocate me on a daily basis. Or laying on top of my legs. Or laying... I was... I am his personal truthfully, bed. <laughs> I was truthfully so jealous because I left the States, I went back to Poland, and like a month in, Parker started sending me yeah. pictures of them cuddling. Yeah. And I am like, I missed this. Yeah. Like, if I stayed there longer, yeah. he would maybe cuddle me. Yeah. But no, yeah, he didn't. He, he, he doesn't cuddle, like, he doesn't even cuddle with anybody that, like, comes over. He, he literally just hates people. <laughs> yeah, but he's... He has definitely the one owner syndrome. Yeah. Because yeah, he has attachment issues. He does. This dude. Cause you can't hear it unless you're absolutely listening to it, but when I'm locking my front door, you can hear him squeaking up a storm. Like he wants to scream at me, but he doesn't meow. So he'll just you can hear him squeaking behind the door because he's mad that I'm leaving him <laughs> to go to work. Yeah. And he has, and I know he has separation anxiety probably because he's gotten so attached to me. Is whenever I try to go to the bathroom or if I'm taking a shower, and I have photos of this by the way, people, is he will literally come in to the bathroom with me. And I, I close the bathroom door yeah. and I know I live alone, but like I close and the bathroom door. And if I close the bathroom door and he's not in there with me, he will sit by the door until I come out. Also, a funny thing is you take a shower and he won't jump in the water. Oh, But yeah. when you leave the, the, the shower, he would go in the shower yeah. you, like after you. So I would take a shower and I would get out and I would leave the bathroom to go get dressed. And I would come back to the bathroom and he's sitting in the bathtub because it's a shower tub. And he'd be sitting in the tub and it's still wet in there. And he'd be just doing nothing just sitting in the tub and he'd get his paws wet he'd get his butt wet and now it has escalated and i have i have photos of this by the way is i turn on the shower and this is before i get in the shower people i turn on the shower i'd have the curtain drawn shower on and he'd sit on the lip of the tub and in not getting in direct line of fire of the water he would then sit on the opposite side of the curtain and plop his butt down in the water. <laughs> and then he would get upset because his butt's now wet. But he would sit there for a minute or two. And he does this even when I'm in the shower. So it's not just like when I'm just like starting the shower. He would also sometimes do this when I'm actually taking said shower. But he'll sit on if I but most of the time he'll sit on the toilet. He also has a weird fascination with the sink. He likes getting in the sink and he likes laying in the sink. And he, with during the winter season, we turn on our sinks so the pipes don't freeze. He will then proceed to stick his head under the water and get the top of his head wet and then he'll come cuddle and I'll be like, "Why is your head wet?" <laughs> yeah. You are planning to, like, maybe in the future move to Europe and you will take your cat with you. Yes. Um, we've been talking about this um, for quite some time that we want to, like, move together. And I am really curious, like, Astu and Vini, our other friend, and um, I am really curious how Whiskey will react to uh, Vini's dog that, is, that yeah. Vini is planning to take with him. I'm wondering that too, to be <clears throat> perfectly honest, because like Whiskey has never been around dogs and the dogs that my family do have, I'm not going to ever take them around for personal reasons that I won't get into. Um, I just don't really like my, my siblings' dogs um, for reasons yeah, of the fact like that you... they're not trained and my sibling refuses yeah, but... to train them. Yeah, but also you 
cannot take your cat to your parents' no. house because your dad is allergic. So yes. And he doesn't really leave unless to the vet. Yeah. Or like going to get his claws trimmed. So which is that that that's about it. Um, most of the time he stays in the apartment and people are people for people that are wondering, I live on what I call the first floor. Sorry, are you playing with your mic? I am. I need cut? to I was messing with it, but I need to I need to leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz I was adjusting it. Um, what I would say is the first floor. It's actually technically what I guess would be the second floor. I live a story up, but it's the first story up. It works in my brain, don't question it. There's the level zero and level one, and you are on the one. Yeah, I call the thing the lobby, because there's no, there's no apartments below us. So yeah. it's, it's the lobby. So it's floor up. It's one floor up. And, um, there is, like, my apartment looks into an alcove that there's like this hollow like circle in the middle of the apartments and so i there's like no garden area for us or like anything like that and like it's downtown so it's like that's that's just it he just i have the I, and i can't open the windows because the open windows don't have screens but i do uncover the windows and he can get on the window seals and he is allowed to like sit on the window sills and look out and all that so he's he's content do not worry he is a very happy and spoiled cat <laughs> yeah speaking of which i don't have any pets um <laughs> yes in let's, the place where i live right let's now get into because, that <laughs> because i um I've been, like, all the pets that I mentioned on this episode so far, I had in my family town. But I, um, when I went to university, I moved out um, to live with my brother in the capital city in Poland. Um, and my brother doesn't want any pets. Which is hypercritical, because he said that he and his girlfriend are going to get a dog soon. So it, this might change, but we will see. I don't trust him, though. Um, don't but yeah, I me. wanted to have a pet for myself for such a long time. And I've been thinking how to go around it because my brother you... doesn't want any pets. Would you like to? And... <laughs> you're, probably, yes. you're probably getting to it. But would you like to inform the viewers at what pet you were trying to convince your brother into letting you get? I will, but like in a second, <laughs> David, give me a second. Okay. I will lead up to that. Okay. Good so I've been like thinking about animals that can be like in a cage in my room so they don't disturb my brother. Get a rabbit. So I, th I like my first thing was like, oh, I want rats. Rats would be perfect. And my brother, when he heard about a rat, he went like, his, his mind went to sewer rats. I don't know why, but his mind went there. And he was like, no, no, not rat, nothing else. So I went to the other end of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. And the I decided other end. to get, <laughs> I decided to get an actual animal, but like, the one that would actually disturb him, probably. Um, so I stumbled upon uh, this Polish TikToker that has a skunk. Yeah. yeah. And I went like, dive deep into the hole. So I was like, oh, I want a skunk because of the visual, right? And um, I mentioned it when we were in the call with Ben. And Ben has a very... Um, American way American, of looking at things? Yeah, American way of looking at things. And Ben went like, you cannot have a skunk. That's a wild animal. Yeah, he's and like, that's illegal. I, <laughs> I was like, that's ben. illegal. And I went into a like a deep like deep dive hole of searching stuff up because well that girl had a skunk and skunks in Poland are actually pets yeah. they are considered as pets um, they are not like common they are not common pets but there are breeders in like a few ta bigger towns when you can get them it's obviously like 
uh, they, their, their glands are removed or stuff uh, because it's not legal to sell um, like animals that can cause such a, I guess, a disturbance um, when they have the glands. Uh, but yeah, and Ben was like, no, it's, it's not, it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. And I told him that, no, in Poland, it is not. And then I was like, okay, but I cannot get a pet. I have like a very strong feeling that I cannot get any pet yeah. that I don't know anything of. Like when I was talking about rats, of getting rats, I did actual research of how to keep them and uh, what they need. But my brother said no. So when I went to the other spectrum, to the more extreme side of the spectrum, um, I started looking up information about skunks. And I realized that they are like a mix of a dog, a cat, and a ferret. Yeah. Um, when you are buying stuff for a like a pet skunk, you usually look for stuff that are for cats. Uh, because they play with cat toys, then you, they use a litter box, um, and like every like size st size wise stuff are like from for cats. Yeah, because... let me let me reiterate. Yes. This is not something that they just thought of in the moment. They have been mourning this idea for months. Yes, I I still want this skunk, but I will get to it. Because I started like a whole as research oh my God. about yeah, it. Yeah, I see that. Uh, I okay, and when it comes to dogs, they need to go on a walk, like on a leash, actually. Uh, they, uh, like when you are potty training them, you can use the uh, like a dog potty pads. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, and they, like when it comes to food, when they are like kids and they are just starting out, Children. they can eat, they can eat kibble, like the dog kibble. Uh, there is obviously way more stuff to it because obviously skunks eat everything uh, and their diet depends on the like season. So um, in the winter they can eat like fish. And then they start eating, uh, like fruits and berries and then like uh, yeah. insects and stuff. So they are they are like eating everything and you have to restrict their diet because they would like literally like search in your stuff in the if they like can smell food and like try to dig it up. Or like a raccoon. And, like, yeah, they're like a, a trash panda. <laughs> and they uh, can like like a ferret play in like, like a very hyperactive way kind of thing and they have their own things like when they are agitated agitated they like stomp their feet which is so cute and I started like I started like looking into every single aspect of the skunk and I feel um, obviously I won't know until I get a skunk but I feel like this animal would really like work with me you know? by the by the way we are planning to move in with our friend beanie in the future somewhere in europe um, and me oh. and beanie have both solemnly agreed i tried staying <laughs> strong fast i did not stay strong fast about this very long because they were mourning it so harshly in our group chat that I caved I brought and up Beanie caved and we went, when we live together, you can get a skunk. <laughs> yeah, but leading up to this, I brought up uh, this idea to my brother and he went like, no, no, <laughs> no way, <laughs> no all. pets. And now, <laughs> no. so there, 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 I think I gave him trauma because of this idea of a skunk, because now when I go up to him and I mentioned a, like mention any animal, he would be like, no, you are not getting it. No, I'm not answering any questions. No. And like, me and B have been talking about um, mice um, and like other like small animals. Um, if this person could have a farm, they would. 
I, yeah, I would. But also, like, you were talking about this with Bini, and I went up to my brother and asked him about, like, uh, if he remembers the names of his animals. But I went about it a different way. I asked him for asked him first if he had said animal because I don't remember because I was like there's mm-hmm. like nine years difference between me and my brothers in age, my brother in age. So I was mm-hmm. a very little kid. Uh, my brother is obviously older, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, and I asked about animal and he was like no. You are not getting it. I'm not answering questions. And when I only when I explained to him why I'm asking, he actually started to have a conversation with me. But he uh, like is very strongly opinionated that he will not let me have any pets because I will go way beyond any expectations. Uh, yeah, there's a possible chance that you would do that. Yes, but I do plan on getting a skunk once I move move out for all from my brother yes and we have oh so sadly agreed <laughs> <laughs> this yes. person and also uh, to be fair i did mention the idea to my mom your um, mother is that what you said you, you're my mom yeah yeah no my mother and... yes <laughs> my mother <laughs> no to my mom and um she was like stunned and she was like no please don't okay. and i was like no i will and my mom was like okay you can when you live by yourself you can i won't like say anything else and then, and then i went but when i visit i will bring him with me <laughs> and my mom like screamed through the hallway no please no it's hilarious. <laughs> by the way you didn't hear this story we i did not we chat in a whatsapp thing or WhatsApp, the WhatsApp. I don't know why I said WhatsApp thing. We chat in WhatsApp, by the way, because all the different phone numbers. And let me tell you, I decided to go on a search for the word skunk in our group chat. There is 93 matches for the word skunk in our group chat, if this tells you anything. 90, 93 and I want to find, there's a very specific chat log that I want, I want right now. And I, I, I swear to God, I will have to scroll so far because it was, I think, like a month, two months ago. I'm going to like, I, because I have to find, because I have to, it's, it's mixed in with a very specific Oscar Piastri uh, sticker that we use where he's like sitting on the ground and is like pain. Yeah. Because my brother told me that I cannot have a skunk, I went through a, like a week of despair. Yeah, um, they did. Because I strongly wanted this pet. Like I never felt about a, like an animal like this. Like I know yeah. that I want a cow in the future. Like Par said that I am a person that really wants a farm, like farm animals. And this is true. If I ever gosh, if I ever get to a place financially when I can, yeah. I would probably do it, this which is, is like a, this is a big daydream. <laughs> so, this is hilarious. You found the word, this is not what I was looking for, but you found the word skunk in German. And Beanie replied with, listen, German is a very literal language. And I went, Beanie, we, see, we have to seal the deal with agreeing to this. And Beanie went, huh? And I said, agreeing to let Aldo have a skunk. Finally. <laughs> yeah. And then he went, that I never was, disagreed was... with it. And I was like, well, I did. And then I went, I just, dis- <laughs> I disagreed at first, but I gave up. <laughs> yeah. That was because I had this week of despair that I was literally like waking up in the morning and thinking, oh my God, I cannot have a skunk. Okay. Cry. I'm looking at this and text. Listen, log. because Jesus. of the, because of the, um, time difference between me and Par it's yeah. often uh, ways that I wake up and Par calls me before they go to sleep Yes. Uh, and we are on call and I am waking up in the morning and there was like a week of time when I was waking up and my first thought to Parker was like oh my god I cannot have a skunk and I would yeah. cry 
I will go into our own personal chat logs in a second. But also, in the midst of this conversation of us talking about a skunk, there's just random photos of Michael Schumacher. Just to let you know. I think you should put your phone down, my dude. Well, no, I gotta find um, this specific where you're having the week of... But I have to scroll firm. so far. Yeah, I gotta find that. I just found that funny how that was mixed in there randomly. I think it's like literally... I think I have to go to the very beginning now that I think of it. I think but it was it so far me, back. It took me... Um... Like, I guess, like, a week of research to being like, yes, I want a skunk. Then I went off, like, a few weeks of trying to, like, still being in this my mindset of, oh, I'm getting a skunk. I was, like, trying to uh, find a breeder, find, like, when can I get stuff and whatever. Then I mentioned the uh, skunk to my brother when I already, like, after a month, um, after a month, I, like, messaged the breeder and I was about to get the skunk I started talking about this with my brother and my brother went no and I, I was it. like I was like a one one step away from getting a skunk you know and so it was like a very sad I'm literally, thing. I'm literally laughing at this chat log so this happened in December for everybody wondering you were like I'm getting a skunk, and I went murder. By the way, most of these things that I'm saying, just one word, is like, they were stickers. And they were like, Parker, why no skunk? And then they sent a little emoji of the skunk, and I said, are you mad? They said, look at it, and then sent another emoji. And then I sent a, a kind of one of those faces where it's like, why are you like this? And they're like, a baby, no smell, just skunk. <laughs> and then they went, I found a breeder. And then Beanie had said something. And then Ella was like, why is Germany so awful? And they said, my room will be skunk room and I will sleep on the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> yes, then, because we were talking about... Is, uh, I, need to, I need to explain the situation. <laughs> we have been talking about how um, Germany uh, doesn't really have laws, and, but have, like... Regulations. Uh, recommendations recommendations uh for people that have skunks because skunks are also can can be also a pets in germany but uh there are recommendations for skunk owners to give them like 10 square meters of um space for themselves which is a lot so i was like i don't yeah. care listen if i move to germany and they will check me i would tell them that this room of mine is actually the skunk room and i sleep on the balcony <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they then proceeded i started sending other like like blank face like oscar piastri plight cat faces kind of thing and he said i can sleep in the enclosure he said, it's not an enclosure when you sleep in it, that it's just a room. He said, he said, give me all the info I need for skunk. And Beanie starts sending you stuff. And Beanie, Beanie said, no, no skunk. We won't find an apartment when you bring a skunk with you. And I was like, thank you, bro. And Aldo then proceeded to reply with, I'm going to cry. <laughs> proceed yeah. to spam the chat and I will count this with the Oscar Piastri sitting on the ground pain photo and you sent I sent it a lot of times 10, 12 14, 16 you sent it 17 times and Beanie laughed at you and I went <laughs> It's, I replied with, I sound like you've got some issues. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then Beanie, I still want a skunk and Beanie, Beanie a went, Parker and Beanie Germany gave is in, Aldo's okay? issue. Yeah, then Beanie was like, I think Germany is, Aldo's, uh, Germany is Aldo's issue. And we were laughing about that and they just couldn't get over the skunk. They just kept sending the pain sticker and like the screaming sticker and then... This is this is where I was looking for it, but it says, "Are you still mourning about your non-existent skunk?" I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am still. And they, literally, you said, "I'm in pain about the skunk." Listeners. Uh. 
I think we you should said, end this conversation you because that, you said that word sticker so many times. Listeners, I think we should end this conversation because I'm being bullied. <laughs> no, we're not ending this conversation. We're having this conversation. Also, we are going on a tangent again, and I really <laughs> don't want to think about it. And I knew, I knew that this. <laughs> oh. This will happen. Yeah, this is what happened. I wanted to bring this up, but I'm scrolling through this conversation because it was it was such a long ways back. But literally, <laughs> then we moved on to the conversation about because we were talking about skunks. We moved on to how uh, raccoons and literally Beanie then replied with you had said something and Beanie replied to you with now we're invading you with raccoons. <laughs> Oh yeah, you, you. I don't know if you know this, but yeah, you, um, you guys had talked about this, and you literally said underneath it, Poland used to have raccoons, par, and now we have a million of them, and most of them are German. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because Poland didn't used to have raccoons. For the people listening, raccoons and skunks are native to United States, but because of like globalization and all of this, they could move here. And Germany started having raccoons because of that, uh, and Poland didn't. But because we are neighboring countries, raccoons started migrating to Poland, and now major, like I'm not going to say all, but the majority of raccoons that are in Poland migrated from Germany. Mm -hmm. So we have like a German invasion. Okay, okay. Before we move on to anything, the invasion of raccoons from Germany. Um, I want you to say the one word that you were just saying a second ago migrating are you saying immigrating or migrating migrating okay i'm not gonna judge you because i know english is you immigrating no migrating that's no. also the word <laughs> it's immigrating no in it. english it's immigrating I'm not talking about immigration, I'm talking about migration. It's still okay. Okay, okay, we're gonna move on from this topic. <laughs> this is not the topic we're supposed to be having right now. But anyways, we had we had so that conversation happened and we still kinda poke fun at <laughs> Aldo for it. It's pretty entertaining. I have to look this up. So I looked up there was that was not the ooh, I actually typed the wrong word. So in our regular chat between me and Aldo, the word skunk comes up five times. In the group chat, it comes up 96, if that tells you anything. But the first thing you said to me was you sent me the pain sticker again and then said, I'm still get not getting a skunk. I said I'm not getting it. Yeah, you went, I'm still not getting a skunk. IDK, if you read the conversation on the other group chat we have. But basically, I will get a skunk when we can get a bigger apartment and a good landlord. So, like, way later in time. How do you That's think about... True. And then you said, ask me something else. Oh my god, I... that was the sticker I was looking for the other day. I'm liking that. <laughs> I changed my mind. I am getting a skunk. I don't well, care you about had, the, you had uh, said trouble at the time, of I'm finding not, an apartment. Yeah, you had said at the time, I'm not getting a skunk because I think somebody had, I think like your brother or somebody said no skunk. And that's why you had said that. Yes. I didn't read about that, Brothers, but. No. <laughs> but yeah, if this person, by the way, if this person could, and I'm not kidding, they would literally have a farm. We were in VC with some of our other friends, and one of our friends started listing off animals, and they're like, yeah, I'd get that. They're like, a cow? And they're like, yeah, I'd get that. This person tried talking me into getting a Highland cow? Is that what you're talking about? The fluffy one? I don't remember. Uh, the fluffy one with uh, horns. Yes. Because, so, uh, okay, the story is I saw like a grown-up once in the states like a whole yeah. um, group of them and i was like oh my god they are so beautiful and i never saw this cow type of cow in in a like alive 
in real life alive. and not on the picture. So um, I really was trans transfixed. So yeah. So if they could, they would have a lot of animals. And you know what? The future is to be deduced later. So right now it's all talk and hopefully one day action. But with that, I'm going to act upon ending this episode because we've been talking about this for quite a while. And therefore I can get out of this conversation, probably not for long, about talking about skunks for maybe, maybe the rest of the day. So with that, I thank you for joining us. <laughs> For this. Yeah, thank you for listening to the uh, very chaotic, chaotic end. Yeah. Um, I thank you for joining us for this episode of It's Been Chaotic. If you would like, please subscribe and leave a like on this episode if you did enjoy this. Next episode is possibly going to be a little more chaotic. We will see. But with my co host at the end of this, is there anything you'd like to say before we end? Whatever time of the day you are listening to this, I hope it was a good one. <laughs> and with that, I will say thank you for joining us again, and we will see you in the next episode. The next one. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody.